going to talk about stays. Today we're going to be looking at all the stays I've made from the past two years since I started historical sewing. The first couple I did not use any patterns. I self-drafted them myself. Myself, self, self, self. Uh, I made them all by myself and you can really see the progress of the stays that I've made. I have not bought any stays. I don't have the money for that yet, but I would like to someday because I'm sure there are people out there who can make them better than me. I made myself some Regency stays, but for the most part I have the stays like from 1760-ish, 1770s, but I don't have anything from the Victorian era. I don't have anything from uh, 1830s to the Edwardian era. I am not a professional. Ask your doctor about stays before you use them. Stays may cause uh, maybe being a little bit more sweaty. We're gonna get into the details, what I did wrong, what I did right. Okay, first stays. These guys are pretty much a box. This is my torso. This is how wide this is. Like, it's, it's gonna be big. So, back when I first got into historical sewing, it was about a year and a half ago, and it was actually, I started sewing again when I was watching Mad Men. I was getting into like, oh, I wanted to do some like circle skirts and stuff, but then it led me to all the rest of fashion history. I really wanted to make some sort of corset or stays that I had no idea the different time periods at the time. I was just looking through Pinterest for references. This is what I made. I self-drafted it. I think it, I was going for more like 18th century stays. Where do I start here? I went to the fabric store. I got any kind of fabric. Mistake numero uno. You don't make stays out of any kind of fabric, like if you want to be historically accurate, right? Disclaimer, none of my stays are completely historically accurate. The fabric I got was like in a sale section and it was like old, not old curtains, but like fabric you would use for drapery. And I also got like this polyester wool fabric as well. You, historically, you would use linen in the time period I was vaguely going for, although I did not know like the exact decade, but it was like 18th century. What I did is I looked, I didn't even get a pattern. I should have gotten a pattern, but I didn't want to spend money on the pattern at the time. <laughs> but I had just gotten back into sewing again. I just drafted it myself. I took my measurements, but I didn't take the measurements in the way that you need to, I just kind of loosely wrapped the measuring tape around like this part, but really like it's going to put it in a different position. So you're going to want to try and tighten it more, but I didn't do that because then you can see the measurements you'll get a little bit more clearly when you have like the stays on because they're supposed to keep your boobs to you, your chest. They're supposed to be a supportive garment. This is like ends up being kind of big on me. I looked up random pictures of stays on Pinterest and didn't even go for an exact date. So I had like pictures of stays inspired by 1760s and 1770s and 1780s. And I remember looking at a pair of um, reproduction stays of um, around like the Tudor era, like King Henry VIII. And that's not what I was going for. There isn't much say shaping. It's kind of like a square. I made a square. The boning. I used zip ties. So this is this is kind of heavy. It's heavier than a couple of my other ones. It's got a good weight because of the zip ties. They're a good alternative to plastic baleen. You have to cut off the little like uh, square piece at the top, and that just creates a lot of like waste. And I felt bad doing that. I didn't have any bias tape, so I'm like, I'll just use some of this itchy sparkly fabric didn't even make sure it was on the straight of green i just kind of eyeballed it i very badly stitched it in place oh yeah this is the top part look at look at, i think i used two different like settings on my sewing machine and i didn't even bother to take it out afterwards this is what it looks like on the inside it's coming apart 
also the way I did it was really weird with the way I put the boning in. It's like a V shape. I have it going this way and straight down on this one. I should have made it, instead of going up and down, I should have had them slightly diagonal. Not going um, horizontally across, but going like this all the way around. I did the eyelets by hand. They're not horrible, like they're thick. They do their job. I worked a lot harder on this one, maybe because they were the first eyelets I ever did, and by the time I got to like my fourth pair of stays, I was tired of doing eyelets. Originally, the lacing, I did it crisscross, like how Victorian ones are, but stays from the 18th century are spiral laced, so that means it's just one single ribbon or thread looping. Instead of creating an X pattern, it kind of creates like a Z look from when you stretch it out like this. But anyway, I fixed that at a later date, but it was wrong. This is coming apart now. Even more of this coming apart. I'll show you what it looks like on. Okay, so this is it. It doesn't support me. Like, it looks flat, but that's because it's so big. This is like a big old opening right here. It doesn't really cinch anything in, which is okay. It doesn't have to, but it just, it's very loose on me. It does make me feel well armored, like. <laughs> and look at this, these gigantic wings. I'm gonna put in straps originally, I guess, but then I was like, why bother? This did not turn out good at all. You know when you first make something and you have nothing to really compare it to of your own and, and you think it looks amazing? Now I look back and I'm like, ooh, I really was bragging about this. Second pair, this is upside down and they don't even meet up in the middle. They kind of overlap. There are a lot of things wrong with this. The fabric is gorgeous. It's like this shot silk dupioni. Dupione, dupione. I was also looking at uh, random references, not really looking at the exact time period I wanted, but there were things that I tried to improve upon or make it easier on myself. I don't know where I got this like weird like horizontal-ish fanning out uh, style of boning channels. This is supposed to be a structural garment. The boning channels seem to be straight up and down to help like with your posture. It crinkles down on itself like a fan when I wear it, so it's a little like wavy. I don't have any boning in front of the eyelets. So like right here, there should be boning to help stiffen it. There's not, so it just kind of, I don't know where I got this idea from. I think I saw like a 17, mid 1700s pair of stays that have like the, they have like the boning channels or cording channels like on the front. And I was thinking that applies all the way down, like, like that. No, like it goes like two lines of boning on the bust and then they have the vertical channels of boning. But I didn't want to do the binding. I didn't have bias tape again and I didn't want to try and like make it ugly again anyway. So what I did is I just folded it over on the inside. So I folded the raw edge of the seam over and sewed it down. It's a little uneven and, um, and I used different stitches too. I used different stitches from my sewing machine so I wasn't even staying true to the stitch. I didn't apply these little dangly thingies to like you can see like there's a big gap right here. The back doesn't have them but there's this big old big old gap where there should be more of these babies. Um, can you see what I'm talking about here? Can you see? <laughs> Lumpy bumpiness. But you can also see my eyelids are really off. I have one all the way down here. I don't even have them at the top so they can go like this. The um, actual boning, not zip ties that I got, that plastic boning. The kind that... Yeah. I don't think I used four layers for this. I think it's just two layers and accurately I would have had at least four layers of fabric. A lining, the inner lining, and then the outer decorative fabric. That's how much space there is. So many of stitching, like I just destroyed it through the sewing machine. I was like Zzzz. Number three, this baby. I don't know what time period I wanted this to be from. I think I was trying to do more of a fantasy-esque slash like 
Edwardian waist cinching thing. I hand stitched the inside. I don't know what happened to the thread that I got for it. <sighs> this does not fit me anymore. This is really freaking tight. You can see like how ill fitting it is. So it's really tight on my hips. My waist is right here, but it ends right here. So it's like digging into my hips, but I didn't even put eyelets on the top and they dig into my, my yabos. I can't even like judge this for historical accuracy because I was going for a more fantasy look. I think I was referencing an Arm Street picture when I was making this. I don't think you can see on here, but it kind of cuts into my ribs because it's so tight. And that's what you don't want. And I can feel there's an angle going down that my other stays that are well fitted don't do because it shouldn't do that. It should just be supportive. It shouldn't be restricting you. I need to take this off. <laughs> Corset number four. Corset. I was using a lot of fantasy fabrics. Number one, historically inaccurate fabric. I got this fabric from Joann's. I don't know if you can tell, but like it's got like blue. It has a pink hue. So it's blue and pink, it's sparkly, it's gorgeous, not historically accurate. The straps I added on later. I used the American Duchess, American Duchess pattern, or this pattern here, and it does not have straps on it, but I wanted straps, so I added straps. Oh look, Boning's poked me out. Get that back in there. I, I made makeshift, just like little straps that I tied on either side with little ribbon bows which is cute but this is way too big so now when I wear it I have to use like a pin to help adjust the straps to make them smaller. I don't feel like remaking them because these stays aren't the best anyway and you could see the boning poking through. This bias tape I just very badly did it. It's loose. It's not even connected so the boning can slide out. I also adjusted it so it's front closing Originally, I wanted to completely hand sew it because it's more historically accurate. Why I wanted to strive for historical accuracy when I use a fabric like this, I do not know. You'll see that I put a lot of effort into my first stays eyelets, and then by the time I get to the most recent stays, I'm just tired of doing the eyelets. Nice. Because I used the pattern, that helped. It has a more historically accurate or silhouette this nice triangular shape and it's got the flippy flappies one i wear this actually very very often it does support me pretty well historically again like this would have been linen but i went for sparkle fantasy but i'm like hey it's underneath my clothes anyway i also made the eyelets really small so it's really difficult to get the ribbon through it this is what it looks like. The shape looks a lot better. It looks a lot more historically accurate. Really, you'd wrap this around in a circle a bunch of times. Sometimes I'm just like, and shove it in the top. You can kind of see like how it opens right here. I didn't put any boning between the eyelets and the front, so it's just eyelets. So this just kind of scrunches up. There's no support for the eyelets for when the thread pulls on it. So this does not feel tight on me at all. And I used a pattern that's too big on me so it's like a little loose up here and I can breathe fine <sighs> sometimes if I want a more like historically accurate look where I don't have a glittered pair of stays I'll just turn this inside out and have the white showing it's more fantastical than historically accurate okay, one thing is like you can see the crinkling right here I sewed it up one way and then I turned around and sewed on the sewing machine the other way and that can ca cause that crinkling. I always feel extra sturdy in it too. Gotta love stays. Number five. Number five? Number five. So I used the pattern again, except I made a long boy. I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I added such a long. It's supposed to end where these end. It's supposed to end here. I added three inches. I was like, I have a beaver tail on the front of my torso when I wear this. I wanted to achieve the longer torso, but I didn't realize that this from uh, Elizabeth Sifir's death burial corset figurine, I don't know. That's not a human body. That doesn't help create the conical shape. 
Like I also lowered the top part of the pattern and it kind of doesn't, doesn't press up against the elbows as well as it should to support it. Again, I did that thing where I sewed up and down so it makes that crinkly look on it. Don't sew your boning channels in opposite directions. So it's supposed to look like this, right? I did go with the pattern and made this one back lacing. I did the binding for this as well. No, I used this really bad tape. I don't think it was even, it wasn't bias tape. It wasn't big enough so I couldn't fold the raw edge under. So you can see that it's really raw and it doesn't even cover a lot of it. So again, a lot of these channels are open and the bones often come out. I didn't use linen like I should for this, so it's just cotton on the inside. And I tried doing like a busk, a place to put like a wooden busk, which I don't have. It's very lightweight. It's not like thick or heavy at all. I made the front a little too low, so the dresses that I made, it makes the fit look weird, like there's too much yabos. So with back lacing stays, you'll lace them up in front when you don't have a maid. Or servant to lace you in. You lace it while it's in front, kind of do it loosely, you have enough extra thread. Keep it loose enough to turn around when you fix your shift because it always gets messed up. It supports me, but like see how I say like this is supposed to be a little bit higher. Let's talk about long boy. Like when I sit down, it pokes into my thighs. So I'm going to have to redo this at some point and cut into it. So that's it. Look at it. It's coming apart. I didn't actually even use boning in these flaps. So they're just kind of there. Fly away! I did not sew it well enough. So it's coming apart here. And I'm going to have to fix this. It's just being uh, uh, hanging on by its the binding thing. I'm just going to cut long boy off. Stays circumcision. Is that inappropriate? So these are not 17th century stays. These are, well, I guess you could say that they're going into the Regency era, so very late 17th, 18th century, so around 1790s. Um, going into the Regency era, they'll have the transitional stays. So I'm actually pretty proud of them. I drafted the pattern myself. I have the little gores, because by this time, they're starting to implement gores in the top part. I'm cording here and throughout I have some like a cute little cording design and cording on either side of the eyelets is what like as boning right here it doesn't go all the way down to the waist um which by the way those kinds of, of regency stays were much more popular you'll see it in bridgerton they go i don't know why because they didn't have dresses that would actually show it off at the time their waistline was right underneath their yabos but anyway, they, the more, pop, more popular style of stays were the Regency long, long stays, I don't know. They had the busk and they were actually not made out of linen. So I'm not accurate with these because this is actually made out of linen. The one time I actually get linen to make a pair of stays, it's not for a period that actually calls for the fabric. And here is the beautiful pair of Regency stays. I'm really happy with these ones. I'd say I didn't, um, this thing has happened because there's a lot of like, the weight isn't, this little flap here isn't supposed to be here. These Regency stays are supposed to be like, split your yabos down the middle and keep your yabos up to the sky. <laughs> kind of like an antique push-up bra. Last but not least, number Number six, these ones are my piece of resistance. These ones are my latest stays that I've made. I just finished them yesterday and they are awesome. I'm really happy. I followed the pattern instructions. Finally, I followed the pattern instructions on this correctly. I used linen for these, actually accurate for these 1760s stays. I made the dye myself as well with avocado seeds and it turned out this really nice pale pink that matches my skin tone really well. I got actual like plastic baleen for this. I, I meticulously sewed in the binding <laughs> and this took forever. I was going to hand sew these as well completely and then I was like, no, 
I'm too lazy for that. But I made sure to go in the same direction every time I did a new boning channel. So that way there isn't that crinkly effect. So I'd say these are the most accurate despite the metal eyelets that I used. I was so tired of hand sewing eyelets by this point. My fingers were burning. I had lost a lot of blood by this time and I just took a hammer and decided to hammer those bad babies in. This is the inside. Look how pretty it is. I used four layers of linen. Okay, so this is it. This is my favorite corset by far. It is more historically accurate than the rest. I love the color that I got from the avocado dye. That is not historically accurate. They do not use avocados to dye their fabric, but I like the linen. It feels good. It feels sturdier than the cotton and the, the weird sparkly fabrics that I've used in the past. Um, it supports, this supports me really well. It feels so sturdy. There's this one. Hopefully you can see kind of how square it is. And then this one. Ta-da! Just use the pattern right the first time. But honestly, I don't think even if I had tried to follow it completely the first time, I would have gotten a good, I think there would have still have been a learning process and I think that I wouldn't have put on the binding right like how I did the first one. Because that's what you do when you start something that you're interested in. Um, you have to go for it, otherwise you'll never learn and you'll never get it done and you'll never accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. You'll never get to where you want to be. So put your foot out there if you're interested in starting sewing or any um, kind of new skill and learn it because it might take you a while and you'll mess up <laughs> the first five times, but you'll get to a place where you'll have an end result that you really love and that is one of your favorite items that you own ever. I want to wear this every single day. I love stays as a garment. I could have a whole other video of me just talking about how much I love historical undergarments, not even just the clothing in general, but the stuff they wore underneath. God, I feel like a princess, a poofy purple and pink pirate. Arg.